pop it homies welcome back to a brand new video so today we're going to be talking about the akumas it's been a while since i last made my uh what akuma is the best one in my again this is this will be all in my opinion please do not come for me because you disagree with me people are entitled to their own opinion i res i will respect yours we can have you know discussions about them in the comment section down below so like it doesn't matter at the end of the day again this is a game don't get it twisted right don't get it twisted but if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And if you're coming back to the channel and this isn't your first time here, you know, smash that like button. Leave a comment. Tell me how your day was. But yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so for the last Aquamas, so pretty much I'm pretty sure there's six Aquamas currently in the game, so this is going to be the sixth one. For number six, it's obviously going to be the regular Aquama for obvious reasons. Like, it's a good Genkai, don't get me wrong, like, it serves its purpose, it's just a regular Aquama, like an intro level to the Aquama series, I guess. It's pretty basic, uh, I despise it though, because it has a dead move that's completely useless, and that dead move is the first one. The copy style, real, copy style reality or something. So it's, I'm pressing one, but nothing's happening. You want to know why? Because there are strict requirements. You can only copy two things. Elemental jutsus, meaning only things from, you know, your element are. So these things on top right here. And, 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 don't get me wrong. And taijutsus. And you're like, oh, taijutsus. Oh, that's not bad. There's things like hidden surprise, cherry blossom. Nope. You can only copy these taijutsu so only the first two rows only the first two rows like no, nothing else so it's not terrible because again like with the addition of new you know elements it might shine one day but as of right now it's completely an other ring dog it's dog it's bad and then next part of the moveset is the copy style genjutsu this one's pretty good you can target two people apparently and like it's a nice stun it's a very nice stun even when like there because again like also it gives you the ability to move this one still gives you like an edge over the person because after like even after the ability like ends and they have the ability to move there's still this red this red amaterasu uh what's it called akuma symbol on their head which pretty much like renders them useless because they can't see the only thing they can do is block and dodge but we can be honest, like, there are so many block breakers in this game that it doesn't matter if they block or you can just combo extend another combo even if they're trying to run away, right? Next, we have the copy style of Reflex. I'm pretty sure it's called. I just called this Auto Dodge. So this move right here gives you... It, it just makes you impervious to any sort of abilities or Genkais or anything. It just gives you advanced ability for a few seconds. It allows you to dodge everything, right? And while you're in that dodge state, it's, the cooldown is pretty low. While you're in that dodge state, you're, allowed, you're able to throw out a Genjutsu. You're able to throw out so many things. But you you're, you just have the ability to dodge everything. And it's a pretty nice thing to have. It's not a counter, but you can make it a counter if you know what to do. Because like you can use, uh, what's it called? Jutsus, you can use heals and everything. Oh, look at that. Slow. Nice. But yeah, you can use Jutsus and everything inside the auto dodge just makes it pretty decent next is the mode the first three modes are pretty much the same so i'm just gonna go to the third one they're trash stats but like what do you expect there's like six modes on this so obviously the first three are gonna be trash uh the c pretty much for this mode you don't get no susano no nothing no arm no nothing this is just the basic uh tier three akuma so you just do your c this gives you enhanced speed inside the bubble and it makes people slower so that's like it's pretty nice it's not bad but it's not i wouldn't say like it's goaded because again like people can still block and everything but it's it's good if like the person's like stunned next we go to c4 which is when your abilities start to change the c for c4 to like c6 i believe are pretty much the same i mean c5 this right here is where you get your little susano guard and then you get the arm as you know as one of the things right so you see you get that little arm it does decent amount of damage it does starts at 4k and then like it's last it does 13k for some reason again it's not bad it's pretty cool next we have the c4 
This is when you get the other Susano again. You still get the regular little oh hi there lag. Um, you get the basic uh, little Susano uh guard still. Nothing changes, but your M1 start becoming skeletal. Wait, that's C5. I mean, not C4. C5 is when you get the skeletal Susano. You do 13k a hit plus 15k. It's a massive increase in M1 damage, and it's pretty good. And the, another thing about the Susanos is that they give you the ability to uh what's it called they give you the ability to uh pretty much block anything even though you're not really uh blocking since like this apparently counts as a guard next we have the c6 this is where you get like you know your susano like your you know you get your custom susano and everything and this is like what's it called this is how my custom susano looks kind of weird to be honest but yeah so you, you get this as your guard now Again, the M1s don't change. You do the same amount of damage. It's like 1k more. Again, not much difference in terms of just overall ability. And you also get a Q. So your Q differs on the ability on how you customize it. If you want to customize it, you just head to the stone tablet right over there. I don't know if you can see it. Hold on. You see that little stone tablet? Just go over there and click on it. And then you should be able to customize your Susano. And then my Q is obviously, what's it called? The bow Q, so not much change. Next, you have the C7. Now this, this is this is the full suit song. Or Samurai Spirit, whichever you want to call it, right? This one gives you, uh, it, again, the C still stays the same for throughout this one. So it's pretty much like the same thing throughout the entire thing. And then what's it called? Your Q is the same. You just have, uh, what's it called? Your M1s. Not much really change about your M1s. It just gives you during you doing your m1s it just gives you like i guess an extra guard so it's not really anything special for this one it's pretty basic in my opinion but yeah that's pretty much number six there's not much to it it's pretty basic uh on to number five five i previously put this one pretty high on my list but with new after looking at all of them all the akumas critically i decided to put this at number five because it does require the moveset is not as good even though it has high damage the other Akuma is just outshining in almost every way, and it's just it's just not comparable. It, the only thing it has about it is like the counter and a high damage move. Okay, that's like nice. If I wanted high damage, I would go White Lightning, uh, Bia Golden Byakugan first move and everything, all that, right? If I wanted damage, there are other Genkai's I can look for for damage, right? The thing about this though is like it's pretty nice if you're very skilled, like if you're someone like Ghost in the Cosmos, sweaty low kid. Uh, you can obviously like tell he puts in the effort to get good with like the, his moveset So if he uses it, he could easily make this like a top tier like number one Akuma But that's only again the fact that it requires for someone to be like really good at the game to make this Genkai good just tells you a lot He just again this Genkai doesn't give him much of an advantage The only thing that it gives him advantage over is damage Compared to other Akumas, but even then the other Akumas could low-key like infinite combo you if they know how to. So the first move is pretty simple. You just oh wait, that's the last move. My bad. I messed up. Alright, my bad. That's the last move. I'm pretty no, that's the second. Oh no, it is the first move. Okay. Never mind. So the first move, right? This pretty much is another type of Genjutsu. So what this, well, not Genjutsu. This is a pretty much type of uh, auto dodge. So while you're in this, and this thing is over your head, anything that hits you, you will teleport behind the person, and then you will stun them. You will give them the same stun as a uh, Satori Akuma, uh, Cherry Blossom Smash, not Cherry Blossom Smash. Yes, Cherry Blossom Smash. All that, any type of thing that like has the little ragdoll effect that brings them to the down breaks them down it will have that and it does burn damage because it uses amaterasu flames so it's pretty it's pretty neat right so it's pretty nice it's pretty nice in terms of counter but besides that that's the only good thing about the move set in my opinion next we have the shidori amaterasu shidori this one it's pretty nice you can wait for it to end or you can hit someone again it has nice it's, it's high damage but Again, things like, uh, if we go over here, things like a uh, flash kunai can just render your movement speed useless and you're gonna, and you're gonna have to, what's it called, just be walking like slowly. 
and you, the move is just use, useless. Like, it, people can see it coming. It's kind of like the Tengoku move where you have to run towards them. As long as you're smart enough, you can easily just get out of the way and then wait for it to end. Again, it's not that hard to dodge unless like someone has you stunned and then they do that and they hit you with it. Then it does the damage. But again, the fact that you have to do all that, it needs a setup in order to be useful. And even with, and without the setup, if you don't let it go and you try to go after the person, they can just dodge it easily. So it's, it's not that good, right? Next, we have the arrows, Indra's arrows. Uh, this one's pretty nice, but like the tracking on it's a, a bit wonky, but it does block break. So if you do get the tracking right on it, then it's pretty nice. It sends out an arrow, does a, a lot of damage, plus Amaterasu burn damage and everything. And yeah, like it block breaks. It, ha it has a decent, like, what's it called? Uh, it has a decent damage on it, but like, again, like all things, the, the amount of people that have counter moves is just, like ridiculous. So they can literally see that coming and just pop it. And like the hand size on it are long. Having long hand size is never like a good thing for like PvP because people can just cancel you by throwing like a kunai at you. Just canceling your hand size. The thing that makes Ryan Akuma shine over the regular Akuma though, because like I'm talking hella shit about it right now, is the mode. The mode obviously gives it above like just the first mode alone is amazing like you don't get anything you just have tier 3 sharingan as always like as you can see like you just have the tier 3 sharingan you don't have the what's it called mangekyo sharingan yet or whatever they're planning on calling it i don't know what they're planning on calling the mangekyo sharingan which is above like the regular alchemo but you know, we're not getting to that the C is just, a, it's kind of like the Itachi's uh, first move, I think. No, last move. It just sends out a bunch of, what's it called, uh, Amaterasu limbs. And that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. High damage. You saw how much that did. And the stat increase on it are pretty nice, right? So stage two. Stage two, you get your little Susano arm. Oh, Skeletal, my bad. Skeletal Susano. The C pretty much stays the same, though. Oh, no, it becomes your arrow. But then you also get a Q, which is, you know, this. So you get you gain two moves from the stage two. So you get the last move. So that means you can pretty much combo the last move and the third move and the C with this. Uh double damage, and then like you just do like your C and then you just send it. Again, it's pretty nice, pretty hectic. You actually have the C3, which is the this Susana, right? The C, the C, I'm pretty sure the C doesn't really change. It's just the Indra is arrow again. Your Q, your Q is literally the same. Just send out another little arrow towards the person. Not much changes, you know, like it's pretty much the same for stage two and stage three, but then we get to stage four. Hold on, I actually removed it. Then we get to stage four where we can see a massive increase of like, you know, damage and everything. Again, Susanos will always do the same amount of damage throughout whichever Susano it is. The C, the C, the C changes to a bunch of Amaterasu slash doing 32 damage each. Oh snap, it broke. But yeah. And, but you, your Q is like literally another Indra's arrow. So the only new thing you get in stage 4 is like, you know, the full Susano guard, obviously. And then the slashes for your C. But again, like, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. It's not bad, like, but compared to like other like things, compared to the other Akumas that are on top, it's really not that like busted. Right? It's really not that busted in terms of, you know, just like capability and ability to combo. Again, it just requires a lot of skill for you to actually even make this a good uh, Akuma. I don't really see a lot of people using Ryan Akuma in terms of like PvP, Arena, and Conquest. It's not bad, but I want to put it past number four. All right. So at number four, we have Riser Akuma. This is one of the more recent uh, Akumas that was currently added to the game. It's really not that bad. It's actually pretty good in terms of everything. I'm surprised I put it higher than Ryan on this list, but like with everything looking at it overall, it really is. This is a great 1v1 and team fight type of uh, Akuma to be fair, because of the last move and just the entirety of like how the Genkai itself is set up. Um, the mode itself is exactly a copy and paste of Bankai Akuma, so there's not much change in that. But the main aspect of the Genkai itself is the new moveset that you get. So, like all Akumas, you have a form of auto dodge. So for this auto dodge, you are able to, if you're, you have, what's it called, buff speed and everything. So you have buff speed and you dodge everything, but you also have a, you can also attack with your auto dodge, with meaning like, if you go next to the person, 
let's say if I started my auto dodge right here and I once I'm in it and I just rush towards the person once my auto dodge is over as you will see right here my auto dodge is over it will hit the person and then it will teleport me back so this is a good way of like but the downside of that the downside of that is that you are not able to attack with other movesets so that might be a little bit like you know kind of bad compared to other auto dodges but it's still good depending on like well if we're basing it off the damage that it has next we have the genjutsu this one's a more cleaner genjutsu you're able to hit like you're literally getting teleported behind the person this is probably one of my favorite genjutsu if i were to be completely honest with you uh with everything because like you're teleporting right behind the person and you can literally just do so many combos with it and, and i'm pretty sure you can target more than three people if you uh what's it called if you time it correctly or i mean if you position yourself correctly my bad next we have uh what's it called the best what's it called amaterasu move i can get, i could say there is currently in the game well probably not the best but it's probably one of the more cleaner looking ones so let me just show you like everything within the radius just gets enshrouded in flames so like imagine if one of your teammates did something like i don't know universal pull and it pulled the person towards you and then he just does that not only does it give you and your teammates cover it gives you so that person that got pulled is pretty much like kind of dead because like the combos would just be disgusting but this is pretty very good for conquest and like team fights anything that you need to like what's it called be in a singular position to protect and you don't want people getting too close to you just pop this and you pretty much just like and it does like 12k per Hit plus the burn damage. That's pretty nasty. nice, right? Next, we have the mode. The mode's the mode's like eh, the mode's not bad. Again, it's the same as you know, regular uh, Bankai Akuma. Once you do that and everything, yeah. Once you do that, next we have the stage two. Again, nice mode. You get the what's it called, Kelto Susano. But your cube, you don't get a cube, which I'm kind of like sad about. Then you have your stage three, which is pretty much the Stage 3, you pretty much have the, what's it called, uh, the part in Susano. This is, like, probably one of the cleaner looking Susanos. As you can see, it's a sun-type shield. And then you see the spear. Bro, it's, it's really clean. Like, look at this. Yeah. Uh, and then, again, your Q doesn't really change. Your C becomes the Bankai C. Unfortunately, I do not have the full Susano for this one, but it's exactly the same as, you know, Bankai Akuma, so once we get to Bankai Akuma, you'll see like the similarities that they both have. So let's get to the, the number three on our list. Number three on our list is Bankai Akuma. I know that Bankai Akuma could low-key contend with number two, but if we're looking at it from like, you know, from a, what's it called? Just from an unbiased point of view, like the second, the first two, the first three, like the top three are very close to each other in terms of just like, you know, pure potential. But it's just like little things like auto dodge or like what's it called combo or like just damage that puts the top three aside from each other. And we'll eventually get to those, right? But for number for right now, number four is Valkai Akuma. Valkai Akuma is pretty much Itachi version one, while Riser Akuma is Itachi version two. So the first move is pretty much your regular auto dodge. Uh, what's it called? It's kind of like the Riser Akuma, except that you can attack in it. You can do anything. It's just that you don't have much of like a damage portion of this. The only damage that you can get from this is if you decide to attack while in it. But besides that, it's all right. It's like a good auto dodge. Probably one of the best auto dodge. It's kind of like the Dio Senko auto dodge a little bit in terms of like, you know, how it's used and everything. You obviously, like it's a tell once you have the little crows flying around you. They know that you're in the auto dodge, so that's like kind of a tell. But that the same thing with Dio Senko, with the way like the little particles go off you, but not much really change. Next, you have the Genjutsu. The Genjutsu is pretty nice, being the best Genjutsu in my opinion, because if you're lucky enough, there's a chance it might break your opponent, just giving you the free win, right? So you're able to directly hit three people right off the bat. I'm pretty sure the max is five. So again, that's like the best done in the game, and like it lasts a little bit longer than the regular uh akuma genjutsu so that's why i like it next we have the um, the third move which is, is kind of like the riser akuma third move but a little bit better since it actually auto tracks and it does 45k i'm pretty sure that the riser akuma does a little bit more damage overall since i'm pretty sure it does like 12k 12 point something k a hit 
and it like and it hits like three times so it probably does a little bit more damage but overall these are concrete moves and you're able to do a lot of combos with them especially the auto dodge and the genjutsu and then you can easily follow it up with your you know your amaterasu next we have the mode obviously as always obviously the mode again just like the riser akuma you don't have a q but your c is pretty much this again not much of a change overall but the thing that separates riser akuma and bankai akuma is that once you go to stage two the skeletal susano your c changes and it becomes this both c changes but this guy he keeps the ability from his first stage and it transfers over it to its q and he can just do that and the what's it called the second and third stage are pretty much the same thing in terms of c ability it's called it's just that this will take away both this will take away both their mode health stamina and chakras and it what's it called it won't it will take away like their ability to charge chakra for a short amount of time so again that's like pretty busted but it's not enough to put it like at the number two position Next, we have the stage four, which is obviously the full Susano. The way this full Susano works, it's like pretty much it sees like the same thing, right? The C is just you hitting the thing and then like you taking away the chakra and all that, but it gets a new Q. If you don't particularly aim at anything, you will do the Q slashes kind of like the Ryan Akuma. But if you were to aim at like let's say this log, you will do the regular Q that it has. As you can see, the C is pretty much the same. Overall, it's a very good like KG prop. It's still S tier. It has very high damage and everything. Pretty much anything that you would really want. It has utility moves. It has a what's it called stun, and it has damage. So pretty much anything you would want from a Genkai, in my opinion. So that's why I put it at the number three position. On to number coming at number two, we have Forge Akuma. Forge Akuma was previously a little bit lower for me on the list, but since it recently got a buff. Oh, uh, well, not recently. It recently got a nerf act because they did buff it. So pretty much uh, they removed the intangibility move completely out of it. The one that just made you intangible and they kind of like put it uh, the over here. I don't know which one is it. No. Yeah, there it is. They pretty much made it into a move set. As you can see, like it's just a regular move now, right? So they just removed the intangibility and actually gave it an auto dodge that's actually kind of busted because I'll just use a what's it called? Tell me to demonstrate this to you because I think the log won't really bring me anywhere. Kind of far. So while we're doing that, the first move pretty much pulls the person into the dimension, kind of making them what's it called a uh, useless. And you can kind of time it if you're smart enough. You can Loki infinite stun with this move, right? You can infinite stun with this move even i don't i don't know why it really got a buff it was already annoying to fight but now you have a long range uh auto dodge and like the atake or sabaru uh what's it called auto dodge and you can just do so much with it for no reason the second move is kind of like the first move which pulls you into a kamui dimension separate dimension and then you're just able to like you know wait for them to get out and do your combo or but unlike the first one, the, se the first one will sometimes fling the person out while the third one will give them, will just put them in place. It doesn't work on mobs, so like you won't see them go, so they'll still be here. But this is the auto dodge I wanted to show you. Wait, I messed it up. Oh my goodness. But yeah, so pretty much the before I even continue to show you the full auto dodge, the first move kind of pulls them into like, you know, a Genjutsu, not really a Genjutsu since it's not on a global cooldown, However, nor do I think it counts as a stun, but what it does do is that it pulls the person into a dimension and then it pretty much pukes them out or like pulls them out of it and then like you can kind of like combo because they're still ragdoll once they got out of the dimension, but like again it's a pretty good thing because like you can literally combo both of these together, but since like it doesn't work on these it's kind of hard to show you the full thing right so now i'm going to show you my uh auto dodge once it gets off you know the cooldown the auto dodge is pretty like nice it has the same effect as the second one as you can see right here and it has the same effect as the second one except that you know obviously since it's on the mob i can't show you the full effect so if you've used forge akuma you know the effect that i'm talking about next we have the what's it called the mode the mode itself is like pretty nice so the first C that you have, I'm pretty sure it's like 
you're, you're, it brings you into like the comedy dimension yourself and you're able to go like just very fast obviously you can't m1 you can't charge chakra and it takes like a lot of stamina again this is more just for like you know running away or just like surprising your opponents since they don't know who you are stage two skeletal susano obviously here things change a little bit uh with your q your q becomes pretty much that it sends out common shurikens which then brings the person towards uh what's it called brings the person into a common dimension just like the second move and then like the auto dodge uh hit effect but again like so pretty much this thing will literally infinite stun you if you know how to use it if you know how to use it you can pretty much infinite stun and since like it's not on the global cooldown with any of its current moves so the first move the third second move and the third move and then the q you're able to just do pretty much at anything you really want so that's why i can't bust it next we have the stage three which is obviously this nothing really changes in terms of the q is still the same next we have the stage four in terms of overall ability the stage four doesn't have anything new to it obviously you can just go into this and that again the only thing that you really get with having this as your uh akuma is that you get the you know special akuma dodge that everything has and obviously it looks clean as heck so you can just go around and pretty much do this so obviously like with this uh big thing you can barely like aim it sometimes so that's like a downside but the fact that you can do so much you can literally just combo all three of these and then once they get out let's say once they get out you pull them in this and then you know Oh, it is. Oh, so it is on a global cooldown. So that was the nerf. But even then, it's like a six second. By the time they get out, like it doesn't even matter. You can just combo it with the one. So it doesn't really change much in terms of like, you know, how the Genkai is used. So that's that's pretty much it for my number two. If you haven't already guessed, you can kind of guess like what's my number one. So let's go to that now. All right. Obviously, at my number one is Satori Akuma. I like even with the new way that Forge Akuma is made. I still think that Satori Akuma is just still built a little bit more different than all Akumas. I think it's probably one of the more, like, if we're talking about attention to detail, I feel like this is one of the mo more, like, you know, well-versed Akumas that was released. So, for the first move is pretty much like an auto-dodge of all sorts. It summons a bunch of these clones all around you, and then, what's it called, some of, some of them will go and attack the person. So it's the black clones that will go and attack them, obviously, and those are like your full clones, as you can see. They will attack, and while in that, you can also use other jutsus and everything. So you can attack the person, but they can't really attack you since it's just a bunch of clones coming at the person, so it's not really much they can do, right? Next, we have the second one, which is pretty much like a counter move, so I need a, like an actual mob. To show you how it looks like because this is the only thing i can use on my cloud i wish they had like a training mechanic that kind of like made things attack you so it'd be a little bit faster because something is like when you're showcasing things it's kind of hard to do it but since like you know again this is a game not really like it's not like something like aba so what do you expect i'm just gonna hit this mob you're gonna let it hit me i attack it from the back so again it's pretty nice and everything next we have the probably the most busted thing about this well, second most blessed thing, this Genjutsu, and I got hit once again. <sighs> but yeah, like, uh, what's it called? The Genjutsu, the most blessed thing about the Genjutsu is not like, oh, it's like, it stuns you in place, Make and once you get the mode, I'll show you why it's busted, busted. But it's, even without the mode, it's already busted enough because like, once you get the mode, there's not much to do. And what's it called? I, I am so sorry. <laughs> I'm already throwing this video, bro. But yeah, what's it called? Once they once you put them in the Genjutsu, there's not really much they can really do. Uh, because what's it called? The Genjutsu has such a wide range. And yeah, if you have speed, you can outrun it. But like, that's that's not really a valid argument. Since if you have speed, you can outrun anything in this game. So let me show you what the Genjutsu looks like. Pretty much the Omata Kusami, you send that out, and again, it does like nice damage for something that's supposed to be a stun, mind you. So for something that's supposed to be a stun, it does way too much damage for like no reason. Personally, I think that it could like probably, it deserves another nerf, because like if you were here in prime time Sautery, you know that Sautery used to be doing like 100k just like off that. 
So with Sauter, now we have the first stage. You don't really gain a Q for this, but you do gain a nice C and you gain TP dashes. Again, if this didn't have TP dashes, I would put Forge above it. But since it does have TP dashes, but TP dashes are TP dashes are nice and the speed. So with this, you have the C that pretty much allows you to confuse your opponent. So pretty much like if I use it from right here, the person will see a dead body right here while I could just be running around the map running away or just whatever right and again you don't really gain anything special except the faster m once next we have the c2 your c stays the same your what's it called block and c stays the same but with this let's just say you do something like this keep them in place and then you just you do your q that was my q so my q so the q for Sauter Yakuma for the next few you know things it sends out a bunch of little what's the what's the it sends out a bunch of little bullets. Let's just call them bullets for a lack of better words, right? So these bullets, they block break and they do 14k a hit. Why? And the fact that you can combo it with that Genjutsu, which already does 20k at the start, but it will do additional damage over and over again. Uh, it, why? So then you have C3, nothing really changes. Your C is still the same. You, you still get your busted Q spec. And then you get to stage four. Again, nothing really changes in terms of like anything. You just have fast again, faster M ones just from any Akuma. Uh, the what's it called? The C is still the same. Nothing really changes from your Q. Your Q just I guess literally the same. Look at this. Yeah, it doesn't really change. So for like the top three, nothing changes throughout. Like you know, there what's it called? Their Akuma except for like the Bankai, which has like a second. You. But again, like it doesn't really change much. All three of them are busted. Sautery, like Loki, deserves another nerf. I wouldn't like say it. it. Like the stun, the stun doesn't make sense, and the fact that you're able to combo this type of damage on top of it, and then just from the regular M ones of your Susano, and then like you can trick the person. It just has everything you can ask for. It has utility. It has stun. It has damage. Again, it's all the Genkai's. You, it's like the Genkai that. You, everyone would wish if anyone like it, again you might disagree saying oh no forge a little bit better but what happens what can forge do once they pop this or they do their counter you're not hitting them yeah you, you can use the argument of, oh they have a counter but every like all Akumas have a counter. that's not a valid argument they all have a counter and then like what's it called the one counter that i could say that i agree with you is that like if they use what's it called their q they can pop the counter but says they can't pop their q before they pop their counter they pop their one and all that so anyways guys that was pretty much the video if you enjoyed the video don't forget to leave a like comment subscribe and i'll catch you guys next time